All right, YouTube, we're about to tear into this L2501. This is my personal tractor. This thing is extremely underpowered. Uh, don't let anyone fool you. It runs okay with our finishing mower, but with a five foot uh, bush hog, it really bogs. Um, it even slows down with that finishing mower. Today, we're gonna fix that. This injection pump is sitting on three shim washers, okay? And they lie right here, okay? can't see them they're very thin there's three of them part of the diagram blows them up i printed this out to show you if you look at five six and seven those are your three washers with your thicknesses you can see right there it says uh point 20 millimeter point 25 and point 30. each tenth of a millimeter is uh, equivalent to one degree in timing so removing, per se, your 20 and your 30 millimeter will give you five degrees of timing. And that's what this motor needs. Uh, it'll let the injection pump actually sit lower on the cam lobes, more fuel. We are going to pull our shutoff solenoid, which is right here. And this right here is the, the hassle-free or tamper-free tamper uh, cap to take off and then we'll loosen that up, which will give us more fuel. Also, I will be installing an exhaust gas temperature gauge with a cluster right here on the side. And I'll probably put my probe right there, make it easy. But let's get into this project and let's make this non-emissions L2501 back into the 35 horsepower tractor that it was meant to be. And the proof is in the pudding. Right there, 35 horse, so let's get it done. All right, so we got all of our brackets off. It's everything over here. And I removed the muffler just for the sake of the video. I really don't think you need to, but I'm actually gonna drill and tap right here. Forget which side, front or back, but I'm gonna put my exhaust gas temp meter right there. But coming over to the motor, you really have to move, remove a fair amount because on this particular model, the intake is on top of your injection pump. So all the brackets come off, uh, take your fuel rail off, you can just fold it right over. Don't even have to fight these uh, rubber fittings. The paint make them really hard to get off. Then we are going to crack our lines, probably take these Phillips heads out, make it easy. And then I believe we need to remove, looks like, our uh, glow plug wires for our glow plug and then we'll have easy access to all of our injectors after that intake manifold and then we'll get to the pump finally got to the injection pump so it takes some doing probably about an hour of wrenching but you can do it um just take your time and everything will come off so Looks like we have maybe one more hard line to move and then we can remove this pump. So next up will be our solenoid shutoff, which is right here. And I'll update you when we get that pump out. So here are our shims. And what I was really hoping for is to find three shims, like the diagram shows for this motor. What I found was two shims. We have our single hole, which does spec out at 25 millimeters, or 0.25, and our two hole, which is 0.20 millimeters. Uh, that's only 0.45 millimeters, so if I remove both of these shims, we're talking, I, get, can, I can get max is four and a half degrees of more timing. And that's what I'm gonna do, because I, I believe just uh, two degrees or two and a half degrees is not gonna be enough to really get us up into that higher horsepower range. Um, when you see right here, I'll move this, move my razor blade, here's where a bit of confusion comes in. That is for an L2501. And what do you see? Three gaskets. So, I mean, it, things can change from uh, year to year, but that is what we are working with on a 2020 L2501. So I'm actually getting some sealant, some um, what is called anaerobic sealant. 
And we are going to seal this machine surface to the pump, which I have sitting over here. The bottom of the pump is also a machine surface. There should be no leaks. And yes, I have it in a bag because I don't want any dirt getting in it. Even sitting here, uh, easy eleven to twelve hundred dollar pump right there. Treat this like your life depends on it. So let's get some sealant and get this pump back in the motor. For making dressing gaskets of all shapes and sizes, fill surface imperfections, and ideal for aluminum and cast iron flanges. So we have a machine surface on both sides. You see. And surface prep is key with this. Get a good clean rag, some brake cleaner, and clean both sides because you are going to have diesel and oil residue all over this area. Also, make sure that this is just almost like a, a surface looking rust. But if you have any actual imperfections, this has to be cleaned. This is just almost aesthetic, it's so smooth. That will give you a good seal, especially when you're ditching the gaskets, which sounds wrong. But with a machine surface and a flange that thick, you can get away with it. That is your power side that moves your fuel bolt on and off. And this would be your return, okay? Now, some of the old school diesels that just have a uh, push-pull, uh, sometimes you wouldn't see this, but this one has a nice spring to it. And it goes right here in the back of your pump housing. So obviously it protrudes in the way when you're trying to put your pump in, you gotta pull it out. That way when you put it back in, it's gonna push on your bolt and it'll be easy to install. You will need to cut this cap off because this little washer right here is actually, as you can see it, there's a ridge and a little triangle. So this was actually hammered on. You need to cut it all the way through to the end right here. And that way you can actually get a flathead and open it up. Let's see if I can get it off. Yep, enough to get to your set screw right here. All right. All I've everything to do with the injection pump is all back in. And just to recap <clears throat> what we did here. Uh, this is the spec sheet for the L2501, and just to recap on your timing, the factory spec is 3.25 to 4.75 on the L2501. Uh, I just used this motor here, which was the same motor, same block, same everything, out of an older machine, and it actually runs 9 to 11 degrees. And with the increased RPM of that motor, which is what this used to be, not 2200, but about 2700. Uh, with that more RPM, you need more fuel. Dropping that pump down is pretty much what you're achieving, is getting that last little bit of fuel that you need at that high RPM. So is this worth doing? Um, we're about to find out, because I've bogged this thing down, um, pulling hills in fourth gear with nothing even going on an implement. I can't even pull a hill. It bogs just forever. I think it's going to be worth it. Um, anything I can do to improve this, I need to do. Because it's, as it sits, it's just not for me. If you can handle it, great. If you desire more power, this is hopefully going to be um, what you need to see. So I am going to get this back together, and I will make another video recapping everything, uh, my final thoughts on before and after. Hopefully, hopefully, I'm impressed. Okay, it's another day and the injection pump is fully dry. I did replace my tachometer cable. So if you look, what side was it broken? Was it here? No. Here. 2020 with 70 hours and it snapped. Not a big deal. Replace a new one, $30. It's probably under warranty, but I didn't feel like bringing it to him for a $30 part. But let's fire it up. The dash is still off. I have a uh, EGT sensor I'm going to be installing in the next video. But for now, let's see what she does. Mm. 
beautiful. So no problem at idle. Cranked it over for mm, maybe 15 seconds to get the air out of it and then it, it, it bled itself. Now I only um, removed this cap and then I turned out the Allen head a quarter turn. That was recommended from the forms. Of course, this could be different with any machine and I really won't be able to tune this thing and back that screw out enough until my exhaust gas temperature sensor is mounted on my dash. Let me show you the mount real quick. Boom, Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. And I bought an auto meter gauge, so it really should be a good quality piece out of this tractor. So if this video helped you, please smash that like button. There's plenty more coming, plenty more content, and uh, especially with the test and tuning of the whole rig. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Smash that like button. I'll see y'all next time.